Let's look at a very simple example of constructing a truth table. The statement that we want to construct a truth table for is this one, not Q or P. Now, the way you do this is up to you, really. There are several ways to do it, and lots of people do them differently, but I'm going to show you the way that I think is the most consistently productive in, in actually being able to get the right answer. It may not be the most efficient as far as speed, but I think it'll get you the right answer more often than any other way I can think of. What they're really asking you to do is construct something like this where you've put every possibility in that can happen for the two statements, which are P or Q. So you know that P could be true and Q could be true. P could be true, Q could be false. Um, P could be f false and Q could be true, or they both could be false. And then you're going to do the truth values for each combination and put them over here. And so when they ask you to construct a truth table, the answer is essentially this table itself with everything filled in. Uh, you could sort of say the answer is this last column, but in any sense, you've com completed the whole table any way you look at it. Now, the way I'm going to do it, I actually take this uh, last column and expand it to give me some room to work. And again, this is my choice of a way to do it. There are other ways of doing it, but in, in the way that I would suggest, I would write this thing so that I've got some room to work. in this last column. So basically I just gave myself some room to work in this column. Now this is my strategy. You can try other things and there are other ways to do it and if you watch uh, other people do it, they will do it differently. So pick a way that you understand it and that's probably the way you should do it. But I'm going to illustrate it the way that I think is most likely to lead you to the right answer. And what I do is I go over here and I take each possible combination that I've listed and I actually put in uh, either a T or an F and uh, simplify. So for instance, if I'm working with, a, with the uh, fact that P is true and Q is true, then I could actually put in a capital T and a capital T for both of those. And what that would lead me with is not, and if Q is true, now another thing to notice is the Q and the P are reversed, so you've got to look, be careful. The Q is here, so you've got to go to this column, and the P is here. Now when they're both true, of course, it's not going to matter. So you've got not true or true. I'm just putting the T's in in place of the, of the statement names. Now of course we know that not true is false so when I simplify that I would say this statement is equivalent to a not true is really false and then I've got or true. And I can do that with each of those so I can continue this but I, I'm going to go ahead and fill out each um, line of this and then I'll come back up. So now I'll move to the possibility of P being true, in other words a T goes here and Q being false so an F would go here. Again they're out of alphabetical order over here so you've got to be really careful. I'm going to put a T in for P and a Q, a F in for Q. So that would give me not Q is F, not false or and for P I put in a T. And again that's equivalent to, now not false is true, so it's true or true. Moving down to the third, I'm going to put uh, F in for P and T in for Q. So I get not, and again Q is true on this line, or, and then P is false. So that's equivalent to not true is false. That's equivalent to false or false. And I'm on the last line now. They're both false, so I get not false or false. And as we've said several times now, not false is true, so I get true or false. Now I'm still not done because I've got to evaluate each of these things and simplify them. But that takes me back to the truth table for, for OR that we already know about. And I'm just going to briefly mention it, but you should already know this. The basic truth tables we've had so far are for negation. You only have one 
statement here and you're negating it. If the statement is true, the negation is false. If the statement is false, the negation is true. I just think opposites there. Then you've got the or, which is what we're actually looking for. This time you have two statements, P and Q, and you're doing an or. And what we learned last time is that an or is only false if both of them are false. So when I look at that truth table, there's only one line that comes out false, and that's if they're both false. That means everything else is true. And then the and does, it's not what we need here, but just for completeness, I'll go ahead and say it. An and is only true if they're both true. So the truth table for an and only has one line that comes out true, and that's if they're both true. Everything else is false. But anyway, the one we need is the or. We need that one, and it's only false if they're both false. So remembering that phrase, only false if they're both false, I'll go back here. It's only false if they're both false. Well, there's the only one that has them both false. So it's only false if they're both false. So everything else, unless they're both false, it comes out true. So that one is not both false, so it must be true. That's not both tr false, so it must be true. And that one's not both false, so it must be true. Now, I've kind of left my um, preliminary work stuck inside the table now, so I want to clean it up and get it back out again to make it look better. So when I've finished everything up, I actually want to take out all of my preliminary calculations. So I created another table where I can do that. And again, I put the possibilities back down. False, true false, false, and then I get rid of all the preliminary work and just put the results from there. So it's T, T, F, T. So the uh, truth table for that statement is there. It's very simple if you understand the basics. You need to take your time, be careful, show your work, and don't get in a hurry.